Okay, this video should give you endless, endless inspiration on how to write your internal, how to get your internal assessment research question. Uh, and so what you can basically do is use these 12 principles and uh, modify uh, what you found in the research or the experiment you've done in class. And that should give you a very good um, personal interest, uh, involvement, and also a good extension. So it should give you fantastic um, research questions to do for your student experiments. Okay, so the first one here is waste prevention. Uh, and so if you can alter what uh, what has been done in the past or what has been uh, done in class, uh, I've just given a simple example because as a teacher, I, I sort of use these green chemistry principles um, decades ago before uh, this sort of came about. Uh, so a lot, a lot, one of the things that we often do is we grab the copper sulfate and we reuse it. Uh, and so you could uh, grab something else that's been done in class or something else that's um, being used, uh, perhaps even uh, just a byproduct of some reaction, and you can see if that can be reused effectively to give the same results again and again and again in an experiment. Okay, so Basically, these principles, I've already grabbed this one, one principle here, and you can apply that to the endless uh, types of chemical reactions and uh, turn it green. All right, and that goes for all 12 of these principles, so some of them uh, overlap a little. Now, this one, uh, atom economy, I've uh, given a separate video to because there's an equation there, and so there's a practice uh, thing there, so that's uh, uh, go to the next video for that. Um, just a, a note, it doesn't... I, you know, it's only one of the 12 principles, and any of these principles, you need to have judgment into which is uh, more significant. So it may have a very good atom economy, but uh, it has dangerous byproducts, or is too expensive, or uses energy, or is not safe. So there may be other reasons why one of the, one of the principles may um, trump another principle. Okay, so... Moving on, uh, number three is using less hazardous chemicals or less hazardous uh, synthesis uh, reactions. Um, this one overlaps, I feel, with uh, number five. Uh, so if we jump to number five, um, you'll see that with this particular one here, you don't actually need a solvent. So these are organic chem chemicals. So I usually veto um, internal assessments that use organic chemicals because they're dangerous, but you can actually use these two as powders and that takes about five minutes of grinding uh, and gives 100% yield. And so you could alter that. You could um, you could do that for one, two, three, four, five, you know, range of five. You could do it for five, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes and see how effective that is. Uh, and so other things, obviously, safer solvents is, uh, and is it less toxic? Is it sustainably sourced? Um, you can have a look here. There is, um, you can see Merck here has uh, lists that you can order of a whole range of different um, safer solvents. And so you could try any of those so that you can see that the number of experiments you can do is pretty much endless. All right, so um, you can Google that yourself. Uh, so back to uh, three, so using less uh, hazardous chemicals or the chemical synthesis or reactions, uh, designing safety safer chemicals, um, that one's a little bit harder, although you can just grab safer chemicals and see whether they work just as well. So I've just put a quote there uh, from this website down here, which is quite useful, um, of a company that just, uh, they were using obviously a fire retardant that was very effective. Um, and so, but the problem was it had a lot of toxic uh, bioaccumulative um, environmentally persistent chemicals in there. And do you really need uh, something that's so effective just to put uh, a fire out? And they actually found a chemical that worked just as well. Okay, so there's a lot of, this is going on um, in industry right now because a lot of good reasons to do this. It does actually save them money um, as well as being better for the environment sometimes. Okay, so... Um, Moving on, number six, energy efficiency. Um, so this is an endless sort, source of uh, research questions as well because you can look at uh, a range of different uh, catalysts or concentrations of catalysts. Um, so you want to keep it the same catalyst and do a range of five uh, to work out what the ideal concentration of a particular catalyst is. Uh, and so you could go through all sorts of different reactions and do it that way. Um, some other more interesting ways are heating through microwave uh, because it requires less energy. It doesn't go through a container. It directly heats the material, sealing the lid to make it heat up faster using natural light or ultrasound waves uh, as sort of speeding up reactions or a catalyst for a reaction. So you can see that uh, a lot of these principles are starting to overlap. Um, also looking at uh, ranges of heat and pressure, uh, or do you need heat and pressure? Um, 
you could look at that for a, a number of different reactions. Uh, okay, so moving on, uh, this one I've uh, seen done in class quite well as well. Uh, instead of using uh, standard chemicals, why don't you just use organic chemicals, so olive oil or vegetable oils rather than fossil fuels, or um, just a, like just another reaction that uses some sort of toxic chemical. Uh, can you use something that's more natural? Uh, and does it work just as well? All right, so you could get, um, I, would, I wouldn't use different types of five different types of organic chemicals. I'd just use one and then do a range of five and, and see how the effect of that is, what the effect of that is. Okay, um, this one here, I'll, I'll just skip over, reducing derivatives. Uh, so if there's two reactions, you can look at the one that uses less chemical steps. All right, so that one's a little bit more complicated, but that may actually work for you depending on what you're studying. Okay, moving on to number nine, uh, definitely a repeat. Catalysts uh, doesn't always work, but sometimes works. If I can find my pen. Uh, so purity, minimize waste, increase, um, decrease energy use, increase speed of reaction. Um, so you can try different catalysts so for that. So you can try enzymes as well. It's a shorthand for enzyme. Um, this one here, I've done uh, potato plastic. So you could Google that, uh, creating plastic out of potatoes. Um, and so you could look at different ways uh, to increase um, the environmental uh, sustainability of creating uh, plastic. So this is getting rid of, so there's a keyword here. You could Google this one, Persis uh, persistent organic pollutants, POPs. Um, and this is uh, can start you off in the right direction. So you can see that if you can create a plastic that's more natural, obviously out of potatoes, um, if you can do something that's uh, more linear, that has less halogen carbon bonds, like fluorine and, and um, chlorine, and high as a higher molecular weight will generally increase the biodegradability of the plastic so that they won't float around in the ocean and end up in your tuna or in your fish. Uh, as microplastics. Okay, so moving on, almost there. Um, this one's another one that I've had in class. Um, I think they were Japanese chips. Uh, I think they were using chromatography, gas chromatography. Uh, and so even if you just, um, someone just put some deodorant, butane ba based deodorant, sprayed it, it was sensitive enough to set off the um, gas sensors and turn off the Bunsen burner gas for the entire class for half the day for the technicians to come in and verify it and reset it. Um, and so you could you could grab one of those chips, obviously not um, in the class uh, setup situation because you don't want this to be tripped all the time and you could work out which gases and which concentration of gases works well. Uh, and so that comes probably under the title of real-time pollution prevention. Uh, this one here, I think this one's Beirut last year. Uh, this was ammonium nitrate explosion. Um, there's endless numbers of um, chemical disasters that go on. Uh, and so you could look at that. And another one, again, as a teacher, we do these green chemistry things without even realizing it. I've, uh, I, I think I've pretty much solved uh, the concentrated H2SO4. Um, I've got most of the organic chemistry uh, reactions to work with three molar. Uh, and you could actually assess whether it works at two or how well it works at three. Uh, so you could do a range of five that way. And so uh, that's just one I've done without uh, knowing about green chemistry maybe 10 years ago. And so there's an endless number of, of, alt, of ways to alter reactions to cover those 12 principles. Uh, and so I hope you uh, hope that ends the, the forever question I get about what do I do, uh, what modification or what research question do I do on my science experiment? Uh, these are all fantastic things. Uh, to do and are actually highly relevant. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please put a like on the video. Thank you.